Okay, before we remove anything else, we need to go ahead and get our timing marks lined up. So, there's a few different marks here that, we, uh, that we're we going to look at. And these are already painted white, but if yours aren't painted, you're just looking for a little, a little indention here, a line basically, on both the cam gears. So, here's a... Here's the mark right here on the left cam, or this is the right cam rather. Um, so we want to line this mark up with a little indention here on the uh, back timing cover. This one's already painted white as well, but it's just a little indention. So we'll line this mark up on the cam gear with this mark here on the back timing cover. We'll go over here to the other cam, do the same thing. We've got the timing mark right here. We're going to line it up with this indention here on the back cover. And then we'll go down to the crankshaft pulley. There's a little, a little indention here as well, this mark on the uh, crankshaft pulley. Uh, we want to line that up with the zero here on the uh, on the piece, this plastic piece of the timing cover. So we've got a 19 millimeter socket on the crankshaft pulley, and we're just going to rotate the crankshaft over until the mark lines up with zero. Alright, so there you can see we have the little white mark here on the pulley. It's lined up with zero. Let's go back up and look at our crank or our cam pulleys. We have this mark lined up with that mark. And then we have this mark lined up with that mark. So we've got the uh, the timing marks lined up. This is a good opportunity to go ahead and inspect the condition of the uh, the uh, timing belt tensioner, the belt, water pump, pulleys, and things like that. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and push on the belt right here. You see we have tension right now, which is a good thing. Uh, you shouldn't really be able to push this belt. So let's do this and we'll check the condition of the, uh, the tensioner. So you see that? You shouldn't be able to do that. So now I've just pushed the belt with my fingers, barely, and it's moved the tensioner. You shouldn't be able to move this tensioner with your fingers. So now the belt's all loose and flopping around. So uh, we know for sure that the tensioner is bad. Um, it's a good idea to replace these when you do the uh, timing belt anyway, but if you're trying to save some money, then uh, you can opt to not do that, assuming that, that the tensioner is better than what I just showed you. So if you can push down on this belt and it doesn't move, then the tensioner is probably okay for now. But like I said, if you're only going to do two things when you do the timing belt, you should do the belt and the tensioner. Uh, the water pump, which is right down there, uh, we'll, we'll inspect the water pump a little bit closer once we get there, but uh, look for signs of leaking there. If it's leaking, so go, uh, go ahead and uh, replace it when you're doing the timing belt. And then you'll have a crankshaft seal behind the, uh, behind the crank pulley here. The okay, next thing we're going to do is remove the pulley here, the outer pulley on the uh, crankshaft. You want to use like a pretty hard jerking force to break these bolts loose so that it doesn't turn the crank pulley too much. screwdriver or a pry bar to uh, pry this pulley away. Alright, next we need to remove this crankshaft bolt right here and if we're lucky we'll be able to use the uh, an impact to get this off. If we're not, then we'll have to use uh, a different method. So let's try this first. Alright, 
Alright, that obviously did not work. So, uh, next step is we're going to use this big pry bar right here with a 19 millimeter socket on it. We're going to put the pry bar here on the crankshaft, and this is very important where the pry bar sits because we're going to use the, uh, the starter motor to turn the engine and use the pry bar against the frame to break that bolt loose. So, I have the uh, pry bar face down there towards the ground. So what's going to happen is whenever we hit the starter, it's going to come up and it's going to hit the frame right there and uh, hopefully break this bolt loose. Alright, so once you have your pry bar in place, go ahead and have someone uh, bump the engine over. Alright, go ahead. Okay. And check it, see if the bolt's loose. Now go ahead. Go ahead. Alright, that looks like it broke it. So we'll check it real quick. Alright, so we can see the bolt's loose. I'm going to take it out the rest of the way. All right, the next step would be to use a puller such as this um, to pull the uh, crankshaft pulley off. Um, unfortunately, in this case, the, uh, the puller is actually too long, the screw is actually too long to fit down in here where we need it to without pulling the radiator out. So. Rather than pulling the radiator out, which you could do if you wanted to, um, I don't want to. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two pry bars behind the crankshaft pull, and you want to be very careful doing this uh, because you don't want to break anything. So what we're going to do is I've got one wedged here behind the crankshaft pulley, you can see, and then one wedged over here. And be careful what you're prying on because there's plastic behind there and, and aluminum, things like that, that you don't want to break. Alright, so take the two pry bars and just kind of wiggle them back and forth. And you see the pulley start to kind of work its way off there. Alright, next we'll remove the timing belt tensioner. It's going to be the two 12 millimeter bolts right here. Okay, next we're going to inspect the timing belt tensioner. Um, we're going to find out, I'm already replacing this, but we'll find out if you're not replacing it, if this is still good, or if you don't know if you're going to replace it yet. So, here's the plunger for the tensioner. Now this, you should not be able to push this in with your hand. So, you can see I can push it in with my hand, so it's bad. So if it wasn't bad, what we would need to do is compress this in a vise. So you would put this end in one end of the vise and this in the other end of the vise. And you would compress it very, very slowly. Um, it should take about five minutes. That's how long you should take, about four to five minutes to compress this plunger into the vise. If you go too fast, you could destroy an already good tensioner. So you don't want to go too fast. If you don't have a vise, or this is questionable, just replace it. Um, it's a good idea to replace it anyway, like I said. But if you're not replacing it, you know, check check the plunger. You shouldn't be able to push it in like that. So this tensioner is bad. Uh, we're not going to worry about it. If you were re reusing it, like I said, take four or five minutes, compress this in a vise, and once you get this hole, these two holes lined up right here, you'll stick the pin in it. Or, you know, a paper clip, something like that that's going to hold it. Something that will fit in those holes um, right through there. That will hold it in place until we install 
until we install it back in the car. Okay, next step is to remove this fluid coupling, uh, is what it's called. It's basically what the fan bolts to. Uh, we've got a few bolts here, one right here. We want to remove that, remove this one down here, remove this one here. Once you got the bolts out, you may need to kind of pry the uh, tensioner pulley here away from it to be able to slide this thing out. Alright, next step we'll go ahead and remove the, the lower timing cover here. You got a bolt right here. Okay, next we'll remove this ring here. And then we can go ahead and remove the timing belt. Okay, our crank and our cams have gotten out of time since we removed this bolt. So uh, we're going to temporarily reinstall the crankshaft bolt okay to realign the crankshaft pulley all right so this this little mark right here is going to be straight up and it's going to point at this line here so line up that mark with that line right there it's going to put this keyway slightly off to the left so line up this mark that mark it'll have the keyway right here will be slightly to the left. When you look at the bottom pulley, or the bottom of the pulley, you'll see a little dot right there on the bottom. So you want to make sure that that little dot is on the bottom. You want to line the cams back up as close as you can. Turn it slowly. It will spring back on you. Okay, that's pretty close right there. Doesn't have to be exact right now. Just get as close as you can. Okay, so we're lining up this mark with that mark. Doesn't have to be exact right now, but get it as close as you can. Get this mark lined up with this mark. And then the marks lined up there on the brake shaft pulley. Okay, we're ready to put on the new timing belt. You'll notice uh, some marks on the timing belt. This Toyotas, we have a, a mark here for a right cam. We've got a mark for left cam. And on the bottom of the belt, we have a mark here for the crank. Okay, we can just lay the, uh, lay the timing belt like this, just so you don't have a whole lot of slack down there at the bottom, because it'll make it more difficult when putting it on the crankshaft. You see the uh, the arrow here for the crank. What we want to do is line that up with the dot on the crank pulley. That dot right there is to line up with this arrow on the timing belt. Okay, so we have that dot lined up with the line on the belt so hold that snug as snug as you can and then go back up to the top okay so while holding the belt firmly with one hand wrap it around the water pump pulley and around here to this cam 
and you want this belt as tight as you possibly can get it right now. Right here you can see that it is slightly off. We want that arrow to line up with that white mark on the pulley. It's just a little bit off, but we can uh, we can adjust that here in a minute. Bring the timing belt back over here. We're gonna do the same thing on the other cam. Try and get it as close to that mark as you can. Okay, guys. So once we uh, once we're kind of at this point right here, you can see I have the belt. Just kind of loosely, loosely wrapped around. We've got it essentially lined up with the uh, arrows here, and the marks there, and same here, uh, as well as the crank. It's also, it's also right on the timing mark. Uh, you can go ahead and remove this pulley right here, the tensioner pulley. Um, it'll make this a little bit easier. Or if you, uh, if you don't want, you don't have to. It's, it's really kind of up to you what you want to do. If you're struggling with getting the belt on, then go ahead and uh, loosen that bolt right there and, and you can pull this pulley off. Um, I'm going to show you how to do it without uh, pulling that off because uh, this can be, once you get used to this method, it, it might be a little bit easier for you. So just choose which method works for you. If you're struggling with this pulley on, then just take this pulley off, line up all your marks like I've shown you, and then once all that's on, then we'll put this pulley back on. To make this as easy as possible, what you want is all the slack in the belt right here at the tensioner pulley. So this right here, that's a little bit too much slack. This right here is okay, but what we want to do is that we want it to be as tight as we can get it right here, right here, down here. Everywhere it needs to be tight except for right here at the tensioner pulley. And this is going to be the only way you're going to get it timed right and get it on easily. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to rotate these cam gears backwards. So counterclockwise. So you can use these little clips like I have here to kind of hold the belt in place if you want. You don't have to. Whatever's easier for you. But just slowly rotate them. And what we're trying to do is get all this slack on the belt over here. So just do a little bit at a time. Just kind of mess with it and see what's easiest for you. So now we rotate a little bit. You can see I've got a little bit less slack there, a little bit less slack here. Still got some slack right there. So what we want to do is rotate this cam a little bit more to try and get all that slack out. So let's check the belt again. You can see we've got pretty much all that slack out. we got all that slack's gone. That slack's gone. So all the slack is gone on this side of the belt, which means all the slack that we have left is right here where we want it. So we can double check our marks again, make sure that the belt hasn't slid off. We've got the timing mark right there, lined up with the arrow right here. We have that mark as well, lined up with the arrow. Okay, and here on the bottom of the crankshaft pulley, you can see that that arrow is still lined up with that dot on the crank pulley. Alright so now that we're satisfied all our marks are still lined up you can proceed to pull the belt over the tensioner pulley. Now this can be a little bit difficult which is why I said if you're having problems with it then go ahead and take this pulley off. The procedure is exactly the same the only difference is it's going to be a little bit easier to put the belt over this gear. But see how I have the belt only partially slid onto this cam gear? So that's going to allow me to push the belt over this tensioner pulley.
Okay, let's double check our marks again. Arrow lined up with the mark. Arrow lined up with the mark. Lined up with the mark there. Okay, now that the belt's on, go ahead and slide the coupling on. Tighten the bolts and the nut. All right, next step, we're gonna take the new tensioner that's already compressed with the grenade pin or your old tensioner if you're reusing it, already compressed with a grenade pin or some sort of uh, device to lock the uh, the uh, rod here back in the tensioner. We've got one bolt already in right here. Slide it through the hole. You see the grenade pin is still sticking out here in this opening right here on the fan bracket. Try and run these bolts as far in by hand as you can. You really don't want to cross thread these. And you want to tighten them down evenly back and forth between the two bolts. Be careful not to over tighten the bolts. This is aluminum so it'll very easily strip the holes out. Okay once you have the tensioner bolted in you can double check all the timing marks again if you'd like. If you already know they're good then you can proceed to pulling the grenade pin. This will release the tensioner. It'll push this up and it'll take the rest of the slack out of the belt. Okay, now I'll go ahead and take this crankshaft bolt back out. Okay, next we're going to want to put this ring back on. Now you can put this on the wrong way. So you need to be very careful when you put this ring back on the crankshaft. Alright, so if you look at it closely, you'll notice that this one edge is actually beveled. Alright, so it's probably hard to see on camera. You can more or less feel it that, that one edge is kind of beveled. So it's kind of like concave, convex, whatever. So if my hand were this circle, you would want, you would want it in this direction going on on this crankshaft right here so if you if you turn it or to turn it around so say like that it would tear up the belt so you want to make sure that the curve goes in this direction